Good morning, everybody. So today we're gonna make our own paint because I know that everyone is probably running out of art supplies at home and I know everybody likes to paint. So I have Valerie today. Do you remember who Valerie is? You're right, she's my daughter. I'm her mom, she lives at my house. So she's gonna help us today to make paint. She is a teacher also, but she teaches at a different school. Um, so the first thing you're gonna need for our paint today is dish soap. I'm sure most of you have that at home. Everything we're using are things that your moms and dads probably already have in the kitchen. Our second item we're gonna use is flour. People use flour to make bread with or cakes with or to bake other things. Our third thing we're gonna use is water, just plain water from the tap. I have it in Valerie's unicorn cup. There's one cup, this is our one cup measuring cup, one cup of water in this cup for us to use. So the first thing we're gonna do is get one cup of flour and put it in our mixing bowl. So there's one cup of flour. The next thing we're gonna add, here, the next thing we're gonna add is one cup of dish soap. So you could use any brand. It could be a generic kind, it could be whatever you have at home. And you could make a smaller amount of paint and split the instructions in half, but never make this without your mom and dad. They need to know what you're doing and what you're making at home. So we're gonna pour our dish soap in. And you can see it looks kinda blue and powdery and grungy. And then I'm gonna pour our water in. And then we're gonna mix. So you wanna mix all the flour down so it doesn't have any lumps, but it might be bubbly from the dish soap. And if you use a colored dish soap, it might make it a color to start with and not just white. So my dish soap, because it's blue, gave it a blue color to my paint mixture. Now, as it's bubbling, getting bubbly from the soap, it will start, the bubbles will start to go away after a day or two. But you want to use your use it up within a couple days because otherwise it will get really thick and hard to paint with. So it's almost mixed. There's still some clumpiness. Here, Valerie, you can stir for a minute. While Valerie's stirring that, I'm going to give you some ideas of things you can use to paint on and things you can use to paint with if you don't have paint brushes at your house. So first let's talk about what can you paint with at your house? Any ideas? All right, so here's some things I have at my house that I could use to paint with. I have a toilet paper roll. So if I'm painting with this, I can make stamps with it and it will have circles or I could smash it in a shape and make that shape with it. So you could use this to stamp paint on. You could use a fork and make tracks with your fork. I have a barbecue brush. You could use that to brush with because it's kind of like a paintbrush, but it's a little bit different. You could find a little Tupperware container of some sort and you could make shapes. This would make a square, just like this would make a, your right circle. Circle and square, there's two shapes you could make. Um, I have another little container that would also make a circle, but that circle is bigger. And the fun thing I like to use is Q-tips. Can you see the Q-tip? When you use a Q-tip to paint with, you can hold it like you're using a crayon or a pen, and it, you can write your name and write other letters with it. I also have a big container in here from Butter that you can use to either make big circles or you could use it to store your paint in with a lid. So I'm gonna put all these things back in my bowl so I can move them. Um, other things you could use to paint with that I don't have at my house. You could paint with a car. You could paint with Legos. 
You could go outside and collect sticks or leaves to paint with. You could even take your paint outside and do all your painting outside. Now a good tip to remember is you need a smock. I know that not everyone has smocks at their house. So you could use an old t-shirt of your mom's or your dad's or your grandma's or grandpa's or one of your brothers or sisters. A t-shirt that they don't wear anymore that's all stained up and yucky. So it would cover up your clothes and if you splash paint it would be on your clothes. Now here's a few ideas of things you could use for paper. So I have a box of cereal. When I, I'm done with the cereal, I just have this box so I could cut it open and lay it, lay it down flat and have a big piece of cardboard to paint on. You could do that with any box from any kind of food. You could use it as something to paint on. Um, I have a gift bag or a brown paper bag. You could also cut it and lay it open so it's flat. Or if you wanted to decorate a bag to put something in to give it to someone, you could paint with it just like it is and paint on it and then you could fold the top and give it to a friend or your parents. And the other thing I thought about that you could use was if you had any boxes. Sometimes if you order something in the mail, it will come in a box. Or if you go to Aldi's, you'll pack your groceries in a box. So sometimes people have boxes they could use. So I have a box here. And this box came from the store. It had peanuts in it at Everything Surplus because it's a great place to go. Um, and it's already opened at both ends, but you could open the other side and then lay it out and you would have a big space to paint on. So it looks like Valerie's got our paint mixed up. Did you put this in it already? No. Okay. So without any food coloring because of the dawn, it already looks kind of green, but guess what? The only food coloring that I found at my house is green. And remember, we use this at school when we make flubber. Who can touch the food coloring? You're right, the teachers or your moms. Because remember, it will stain your fingers if you get it on it right away. And it comes out really fast. So I'm just going to add a few more drops. And we're going to make our paint just a little bit more green. We'll stir that around. You can see it's starting to stir in. Now, if you wanted to make different colors, you could get different containers and use different colors in it. But I didn't do that today because I only have green. I will have to add that to my shopping trip for when I'm allowed to go to the store again. So here we have it. This made quite a bit of paint. And one positive note, mom and dad, because it has dish soap in it, it should wash out pretty easily. That makes it more washable. So I'm going to use our bag and I'm going to open it up so you can see how our paint looks when we paint on it. And how big a grocery sack can give you a space of to paint. So this makes it so big. Sorry, don't tip that. It takes up my whole table then. So here's my table. I got my paint. I'm going to paint with the toilet paper roll. Can I use the fork? And Valerie would like to use the fork. So we're going to put our tools off to the side. And I'm just going to dip my end in there and make some circles. Valerie's dripping hers on, but you'll have to be careful if you do that because that could leave a big puddle and then it could drip all over the floor. Okay, so do you see what she's doing with hers now? She's taking her fork and just making prints with it. All right, I'm going to show you our painting and what we have. Here, Valerie, could you hold this? Mm -hmm. So you could see the different things that we made. We made fork marks. I made circles. So easy ways that you can still do art at home because we all know that most of you all love to paint. All right, friends, I hope we get to see each other again soon. Hopefully this will be fun for you to do at home and a fun activity for mom. 
Remember moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas, whoever's doing the activity, one cup of flour, one cup of water, one cup of dish soap. Bye. See you again soon.